Hey everybody, I want to thank you for joining me for today's plein air adventure and today I'm going to be working on my grays. As you can see, it's very kind of foggy. I'm going to be painting this over here on a 6x8. Now I've toned the panel a kind of medium grayish brown to facilitate painting the grays on top. So we're going to get started. I want to thank you for joining me and if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe and for everyone else, Thank you for watching. Let's get started. Going to be playing around using uh, my viewfinder, view catcher, I should say. I don't use this a whole lot, but it's handy to have. And then if I have uh, some questions about color, I can use the hole here to isolate the color and figure it out. So we'll see how it works out. Now I'm purposely doing vertical strokes so when I cut back across with uh, some highlights on the water I'll have an interesting juxtaposition of excuse me, brushwork. And I'm just going for broad statements right now and see how the value scheme is adding up before I commit to details and such. So now I'm just going to lay in the foreground uh, reflection. So far the CAD Yellow Pale, Ultramarine Blue, and Rose Matter is working out okay. Uh, temptation, like I said, is to start with some earthy tones, but then you don't want it looking too muddy and too drab. So this gives you an opportunity to juice up, get some chromatic uh, elements in there. Just getting an average value in there, and I'll nuance the subtle details of the different leaves and uh, light and shadow pull them out after the fact after I've nailed the uh, values that I want liking it so far very gentle feel and this is a test for me because I like to have drama and contrast so this is why I got my butt out here today Got to develop your skill set. You can't be complacent and just do one, one trick pony stuff. Kind of feels like I'm doing my homage to Monet painting a little bit. Kind of liking that.
what I've decided to do is paint this back out and then I'll just lay the brighter yellow over it. I think it'll add for a more fluid painting, make it more interesting. That way I'm not trying to paint around shapes. I'm keeping with the broad statements. Not just trying to fill it in, but to create interesting ideas of shapes. Very muted. Don't lose that. I want to send it back in space. But you also need shadows back there to add interest and to show realism of the levels of trees. So, trying to build up more of the shadow area, the subtle shadow area where I'm going to put the bright, brighter foreground tree to set it off. That way it pops and, and comes forward by contrast. Be sure to pick up your shadows in the water below. Especially nice because it sets off that top of the rock there. Put a little, just suggest. Okay, I'm going to push the saturation a bit in these foreground trees. Want to definitely suggest fogginess. I like how it's turning out, and it's because I've kept the broad statements, and it really has some punch. Not going too crazy. I'm already liking this quite a bit. Now I'll try to get some chromatic yellow green, but not acidic. And very lightly try to highlight. And I'm purposely using a bigger brush than I think I need to try to keep it fresh. And if I feel I need to noodle more. Then I can go get a smaller brush. Okay, working on this tree here, the key is not to get mechanical. Try to get the gist of the tree. That's why I'm, I'm got some pretty kind of thick paint and I'm very lightly touching the panel. You notice I haven't put the trunk in yet. I'll do that after the fact. I'm trying to get suggestion of leaves. Try not to mix too much white. Uh, you don't want chalky, but you gotta do what you gotta do when you thicker paint in these highlights. Before I was just letting it intermix with the background color a bit. Now I bring out more chromatic and I'm trying to now bring out just a few kind of stippling the paint on there to suggest the structure of the little tree there. Tricky. Tricky, tricky. Alright, it's a very subtle obviously value difference. You're not going to have uh, strong differences there. Trying to get a little more warm green for over here. Get a little interest over there because you have of course the reflection trees go up over here. The trick's going to be getting some of that down in here so that should be fun but for right now I'm just pushing a little more of the warm green darker Bring it forward a bit. 
just suge suggesting kind of a tree. A little more blue. Very hard to work under these lighting, this lighting. You think you're not getting it dark enough. And if I think it's not dark enough, I'm leaving it because I know from before when I get inside, it's going to look totally, totally different. And there's just a hint at the base here. Break up this because it's kind of grassy. Tip of my brush, just suggestive. Getting in just more pure yellow with a little bit of white. I have some chromatic saturation. You're not going to reach all the colors you want with limited palettes. You have to come up with a happy medium and uh, value. So now comes the fun part of getting that reflection of the tree in the water. We don't really need too much exactness here, just a suggestion of that tree. The eye will fill in the rest. You want like almost you want to feel like you've glanced over and to your you know as you're walking in the woods and see this scene as opposed to staring at it. So okay, I'm kind of liking that. I'm gonna uh, thicken the water up here a bit. Now this isn't going to be perfect. I'm trying to just suggest, see how far I can get away with, uh, you know, some people could turn this upside down. I don't want a mirror reflection. I'm just trying to get an impression. So now I'm going to get into some lighter details and try to pull this thing together and call it done. Okay, now I'm just going to put uh, some finishing touches on it with some very intense, comparatively to the rest of the scene, uh, highlights on the water. Try to get uh, a little more oomph in the painting here, but still retain that fogginess feel. I'm trying to suggest uh, ripples. I like that. Kind of just drag your palette knife back and forth. Just a few well placed textural elements. You can see why I do voiceover because trying to talk and paint at the same time. It's always a challenge. Now I'm just going to clean up just a few by taking off the bottom here as you'll see in a second right in here I'll mix up a little bit of the reflection color ideally you'd have some left over from a previous mixture but I don't but that's okay just be decisive white 
Boom. Should be a nice combo with the lightly mixed tones underneath. Just a few key spots. Don't overdo it. Try not to have it look gimmicky. Try to get char characteristics of what it is you're painting. Gonna try to get a little dark brownish green. Try to do try not to overdo it. Now with the don't forget you gotta put some of those lighter reflections in the water but I'm not using the palette knife. Trying to suggest it with the corner of the flat. Because it's going to be a muted reflection anyway. And you can keep noodling this and, and push information even more in terms of what details you want. But be careful. Just bring out a few key elements from your composition. Because that's really all it needs. And if you stroke in a way that's interesting and you got the right value, it'll appear to be, especially with rocks, textural, not like you smoothed out a rock and put and it turned it into eggs sitting in the water. Because it's so blended. Now I'm going to push some darks over here to set off the distant tree line a bit. Just want to pull the shoreline out a bit. Don't forget to pick up your dark in the water a little bit. And I'm just going to call this good now. Just a few little strokes. That's it. Okay, this concludes this plane air adventure. Uh, I don't know, about an hour, I guess, or almost an hour. And uh, actually pretty happy with it for working with grays. I don't, I normally look for that high contrast, sunny, dramatic kind of setting, and we can't always have that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave your comments what you think about it. And uh, again, for uh, I, I invite you to subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and if you're new to the channel, thank you for checking out the video, and for everyone else, I appreciate you watching the videos from the beginning. So until the next adventure, see you later. Bye.